This is a Global Player original podcast. Hello. Hello, where are you? In in the other side of the world or something? Oh, no, I haven't got a microphone in front of me. <laughs> what an idiot. I'm just, I'm just talking into thin air. <laughs> like I'm speaking to a ghost. Is there anybody there? Is there anybody there? Where are you? Uh, I'm at home. Where do you think I am? Oh, you're, you are equally um, not paying attention and doing what you should be doing, you idiot. Where's the microphone? Okay. It's there, isn't it? Put it, in, put it in front of your face hole. You're over the other side of the room. I, I am not. You bleeding well are. Oh, I know why. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm not. Right, I'm going to... That's it. It's over. I've got to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't. I'll do it for you. Thanks. <laughs> is it working? That's it. It's working now, isn't it? It is working now. Right. I don't know what that was about, Nickers. I'm sorry, but it's... It's the weather. Let's blame everything on the weather. <laughs> User error, I expect. Well, when everything shuts down, I don't know why it, nothing works when I start it up again. And then I have to restart it up. I, t- I don't understand that. I do not know why that happens. User error. No, it's not. <laughs> it's all user error. It's not. The screen looks exactly the same as it did the last time, except I've changed my name. The settings. Yeah, well, yeah, the screen. It's the <laughs> screen, isn't it? Oh, I've got a hangover from hell. You need to uh, re-establish your relationship with, or reset your relationship with alcohol. Why? Because you've got the hangover from hell. I know, but the only way to reset my relationship with alcohol at the moment is to get a glass of wine. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's way too early. Give it another half an hour. It's not early here. It's, 12, it's quarter past 12. <laughs> right, like I said, give it another half an hour. That's almost one o'clock. It's practically six. Enjoy. Well, we've got lunch at 2.30, so we're going out. Are you going somewhere exquisite? Well, no, not really. Just um, just one of the beach restaurants down in Nice on the beach. Yeah, see, that doesn't sound very nice at all. That sounds awful. Oh, no, I'm just going for lunch on the beach at Nice. It's dreadful here. Well, I'm sorry there are restaurants on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're just on the beach. They're only there in the summer, and mm. it's, it's just nice looking at the blue sea. Yeah. And having rosé wine and eating nice fish and stuff. That, you know, sounds, that sounds awful. We've got to do these <laughs> things while we can, Nickers. <laughs> yes, that's right, because the end of the world is pencilled in for, is it October? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but soon, I mean... <laughs> soon. Yeah, for the rest of your life, yeah. The hysteria is driving me bananas, I'll tell you. Unbelievable. Bit of- and, you, and you don't have to be driven very far to go bananas. Well, no, I'm trying to I'm trying to stay calm. Success? Well, it's normally that's why I've got a hangover. <laughs> oh right. That's your coping mechanism. <laughs> Getting absolutely hammered. No, I mean I drank a bit last night obviously because I just get so excited about coming home because I've been in London you see I've been doing loose women and I was only there oh and the other thing I got really excited about was the fact that the airport was really quiet (laughs) well that's bizarre because the people were queuing for six hours to get through Dover well exactly so it's got to be somewhere there's got to be a crisis somewhere hasn't there but it definitely was not at Heathrow Airport yesterday it was It was quiet, and I was, you know, when you work yourself up into a frenzy, like imagining how terrible it's going to be, yeah. <laughs> and then when you get there, it's not. Oh my god, it's just, it's just the nicest feeling. That's really weird. <clears throat> weird though, because I thought that this last weekend was the busiest, was going to be the busiest weekend for like three or four years, because we had the two years of COVID, and then you couldn't travel here and you couldn't travel there, and yeah. so everybody like cancelled their their plans. And then this weekend, 
was going to be the worst in history because yeah. everyone, all this pent up demand to go away. And finally, we could. And you breezed through uh, Heathrow like a Hollywood superstar. Absolutely no problem. And also the kids all broke up yesterday. So it's proper summer holidays now. But why they've all decided to go via the Channel Tunnel, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that queue, oh, it's just seven, seven hours someone was on the news going, yeah, seven yeah. hours we went with two kids in the back. Oh, my right, God. Yeah. Horrible. How hellish is that? Well, I, I don't know. I think people have just been put off going to the airport because – um, the newspapers keep telling you that they're they're hellish, but they're not. And my friend went from City last night, London City Airport. Yeah, she said that was really quiet. It was a breeze. It just like sailed through. Well, London City Airport. I mean, there's nothing there, is there? I mean, it's tiny. It is small, yeah, but it's it gets quite busy. It does yeah. it does a lot of um, domestic flights and BA? I fly into City sometimes. I prefer City actually. Um, but when it's busy, busy, it's a nightmare because, and and also the security people there are really officious and at Heathrow they're really quite friendly. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, at City Airport they, they're used to um, dealing with stressed business persons who um, they want everything yeah. and they want it right now. God damn it! Or I'm going to see your manager. That is very true. Actually, when you go from City, it's not like. It's not like Heathrow or Gatwick where there's loads of kids with their bucket and spade. Mm. It's always like blokes in suits and, yeah. you know, looking very impatient and always mm. on their phone. <laughs> yeah, not having a very nice time. No, and then there's me. <laughs> <laughs> there's you with a glass of rosé in one hand and a glass of rosé in the other going, Pah. Do you know how much a glass of rosé is in the in the cafe at Let me guess. City? Let me guess. Have a guess. How big is the glass? Um, well, it's normal size, just a, a no, glass size. No, like... it's normal size. There's a 125, which when they bring it to you, you think, well, where's the rest of it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is that it? <laughs> it's like a little taster one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Would Madam like to taste this? <laughs> so we just give her the bottle. <laughs> yeah, there's 125, two... Uh, Two fifty, and that's a third of a bottle, yeah. which is always a surprise because it doesn't look that much, does it? No, it doesn't. And one seventy-five, actually, they do one seventy-five, don't right. they? Which is kind of in between. Well, what are we talking about here? Uh, I, I don't know. It looks looks like about a one seventy-five. It's definitely right, not two fifty. It's going to be eight pounds fifty. I better got that right. No, you haven't. You've got what? it completely wrong. <gasps> It's more than that. A bloody more? coffee is about four pound fifty, and that's oh tiny. God. Honestly, it's the most expensive, the most expensive airport cafe restaurant ever. Well, those people aren't paying for themselves, though, are they? They're on expenses from Goldman Sachs. Um, probably. Well, the the yeah. Occasionally, you see tourists in there. There were two girls in there last time when I left, and it was early Saturday morning, and they were like ordering. Absolutely everything. They must have had trust funds or something. Because <laughs> they, <laughs> they ordered like full breakfast and two like glasses of champagne and two like other drinks. And I just thought, oh my God, that bill's going to be like 200 quid. <laughs> For breakfast. For breakfast, yeah. It was only like seven o'clock in the morning or something. I thought. Well, oh. I don't know. The, the holiday starts at the airport or it should do. It should, should start with the packing. Well, it does, but we, do you know? <laughs> do you remember being that young that you could eat a giant full English breakfast, drink champagne and wine at seven o'clock in the morning, and still just walk onto the plane? I don't. I can't remember that. <laughs> and still just walk straight on the air and do a superb show. <laughs> I mean, having not been asleep all night long, you just come from the club. You're absolutely stinking. No, yeah. I've never done that. I've never done that. I bet you have. I have never done that. I ever, bet you ever. have. I have never done that. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have. I can tell by the way you're saying it that you definitely have. I definitely have not done that. No. And I will well, sue you if you say it again. <laughs> so when we were at um, Virgin Radio, remember, in yeah. Golden Square? Yes. So did you ever because everybody else did, just sleep on the couch there. <laughs> no, not once. No. 
<laughs> Definitely not. Oh, God, that was just a hive of drunkenness. Wasn't it was it? shocking. Well, they it was their fault. They provided a massive fridge of free booze that, that people were tucking into at all times of the day and night. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember that? Like free booze. They had a party, uh, like a not a, an organised party. It was just people went back and had a bender and were dancing on the boardroom table, and it collapsed. (laughs) (laughs) That's what it was like there. Oh, my God. Was was anybody injured? I don't know. Too drunk to notice. (laughs) It was mad, wasn't it? I mean, what you used to get away with there was just... Amazing. yeah. Uh, really crazy. Those were the days, though, I yeah. think. Well, I used to work in the Virgin Megastore, and it was like that on steroids there. I mean, it was <laughs> insane what was going on at the Virgin Megastore. Did I, you get I free was... booze there as well? Say what? Did you get free booze there as well? Oh, God, no. No, oh. no, no. But absolutely everything else you could possibly imagine was going on at the sh- above the shrink room out the back there in, uh, what was it, Hamway Street? Hamway Street, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. where um, that nice restaurant, Hakkasan, is in Hamway Street. Isn't right. It? Yeah. Yeah, didn't used to be nice. Well, I'm, I'm sure it's still not nice as a street. But well, there was know. a nice tapas bar there that used to stay open like nearly all night. It was a Spanish oh, yeah. bar. Do you remember that? No. Yeah, it was know. really good. Can you hear the outside? I've got the window open. Uh, no, I can't hear anything, no. I can hear a phone buzzing, though. Is that yours? There's a plane going by. That's oh, all. oh no, are you not. on the flight path? No, it's a, it's a little one. Somebody's, some yeah. swell is going from here to there. Probably, be, it, joining, oh, probably be joining you down there <laughs> on the beach in Nice in a couple of hours. Oh, God. Do you know what? I love driving past Nice Airport. I'm not joking. There's about two miles... Of private jets. <laughs> it's just, yeah. it's yeah. just sick. <laughs> and they've all decamped and are now sitting on their yacht. Yeah. You know, having, having their toes massaged by a Ukrainian. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's probably right, yes. Yeah. Especially as the Russians aren't allowed here anymore. But we, I know they do, they are though. They yeah. pretend that they've thrown all the Russians out. Yeah, but sure they, they have. Yeah. They haven't. No, no it's too much money. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so um, what have you been up to, Nickers? Apart from working, you've been work. Don't tell me you've worked ten days nonstop, no break. No, I haven't. I I did the. I did nothing this week, work wise, and it oh. was. It felt as though I was being naughty. As though, am I actually allowed to just sit here and do nothing? It just felt really weird. Why? Wow, I thought you was working every day. No, not this week. It's last week I was working every day. Oh, right. Okay. So you've yeah, so this work. week I just spent the entire time thinking, oh, this feels odd. Am I, should I be doing this? Don't I have to prepare? <laughs> <laughs> so you worked last night, though. Yes. Yeah. This being Saturday, yeah. Well, one thing I did this week, and people, people are going to have to grip onto something firm because you're not going to like it. What? I went to the zoo. Why, would, why wouldn't I like that? Well, not you necessarily, but people listening are not going to like that I went to the zoo. But I have not wanted to go to the zoo for my, for pretty much my entire life because it all seems a bit like, should we actually be doing this? You know, mm-hmm. with, the, you mean. with the animals. But they, the, what the, the, diff, the reason that I went was they had an advert that says, we're um, having... Um, uh, dusk openings for adults only. For, uh, we've got cocktails and food. And what's that? I don't know. It's an Italian number. <laughs> 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 Who's calling me from Italy? I don't know anyone in Italy. Well, the more important thing to think about is why is your phone on? Well, that's my other phone. My phone is off. But my, my other phone, phone is, <laughs> wait a minute, my phone is off, she said in a huff, but the other phone isn't. That's what? right, that's my other phone. I've got a French phone, haven't I, chump? 
That's my <laughs> no, you're a chump. <laughs> yeah, I'm the chump. That's my French phone ringing from Italy. And I don't know, if I booked a holiday in Italy or something? <laughs> Should I be there now? <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> uh, it might be a delivery. Uh, oh, God, I don't know. I'll ignore it anyway. Sorry about that. After, yeah. Let me I'm, turn my email off either, so you're going to stop moaning about that when it goes bing. And you go, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I went to the zoo because they had an evening, uh, like an after-hours evening thing. Mm. They said, we've got cocktails, and they had me at cocktails. So yeah. I thought, well, all right. I mean, okay, because it's I'm kind of interested in, you know, the architecture of it all. There's that, that penguin house that's really famous. And yeah. I'd just be interested to see what it's like. Uh, with the benefit of there not being any screaming kids, not mm. not many people there, and they're putting on a show, and um, it sort of reinforced my opinion that I don't want to go to the zoo because there actually weren't that many animals. It was like no, it, it felt a bit like being in Jurassic Park because everywhere there was these big fences and they were electrified, and you know you expected uh, T Rex to, to come charging out of the undergrowth any at any moment. It's, mm. it's, Bizarre, the uh, you know the look of the place. So there weren't really many animals out because they don't have crowds of people at that time of night. Everybody goes at six, and then it's quiet for the animals. And so I assume they, they just go to sleep. To sleep. Um, so I don't they, think they really... have many animals anyway. Though do they? I think I don't think they've got. Have they still got elephants there? I don't think they have. I they, don't had think they, giraffes. Have. they had giraffes. They had giraffes. Uh, yeah, yeah all right. a couple of giraffes. They had a tiger that was just doing that pacing thing up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. And that made me a bit sad. It is it sad. A couple of um, uh, monkeys of a type. I'm, I thought they were lemurs, something like that. Mm. Parrots. Oh, my God, what a noise those things make. I, I know. Such I know. a racket. How can they stand it? <laughs> Such um, a racket. <laughs> it was. But other things in it were, were interesting. I mean, like I said, I, I like looking at the, the buildings and just the, the it of it. And um, I had one of the best burgers I've ever had in my life at this. At the zoo? Yeah, at this. They, they did these pop up stands mm. for booze and food. And it was an African. <laughs> Stand and it had plantain in it, like fried plantain. Hang on, uh, there's no animals at the zoo, and you're eating burgers. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I tell, yeah, I tell you what, those lions, absolutely delicious. Was it really? Oh my god, I haven't been to the zoo for. I actually know I went. Um, 2008 was the last time I went to the zoo, and I know, mm. only remember that because. Um, it was one of my first dates with Mark. <laughs> right. And we went to this, like, charity thing at the zoo, and I got to feed the giraffes and everything. And it was <laughs> – and I've got a really great picture of us at the zoo. That was the last time I was there. And there weren't many animals there even then. And it no. was in the middle of the day. So I don't know where they all are. They, do they still have penguins there? Well, the penguin house, you know, that old – is it yeah. Beskind? Is that the architect? I can't remember. But um, that's still there, but it had a woman playing a harp in it. So oh. they didn't have penguins in there. I think they've moved the penguins to somewhere else. Oh, no, they have. They, they, yeah, that's right. They had a little show there. Um, they moved the penguins to somewhere that's more penguin-like rather than this austere sort of um, brutalist penguin uh festival of slides it was just really i mean it looks nice to humans but i'm sure penguins absolutely hated that whole famous penguin house but yeah, now they, they probably like with... it because it's white isn't it and they think it's like snow and ice well, they probably don't think of anything of the sort. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's they're, like that is peng... london zoo isn't it that penguin yeah. house it is yeah but they're not there anymore but um in all great burger mm. interesting buildings but I'm not totally comfortable with that whole zoo thing. No, it is a bit, it is a bit, isn't it? Especially tigers and things like that. Yeah. They, they've probably been in there so long. If you put them out in the wild, they wouldn't be able to fend oh, for themselves. Oh, yeah, none, none of them would, no. No. Uh, I mean, insects, 
not bothered. No. Um, reptiles don't really care. Um, but, I mean, th- they did say, you know, we are all about conserving the species and stuff like that. And, and, and that's all very good and commendable unless you are the individual of the species they're saving. Because that tiger, if we're saving that sp- specific strain of tiger, uh, then that's good for tigers, but not that particular tiger. No. It's going to spend its entire life pacing up and down 10 feet uh, in front of a door through which it would uh, dearly love to eat everyone that's looking at it. <laughs> they used to have pandas at London Zoo. I don't think they've got those anymore. No. Yeah, not. they used to sit there like big fat, like big fat people eating bamboo all day long. <laughs> Pandas are idiots. How are they <laughs> How are they still here? They eat bamboo, which yeah. is so uh, poorly nutritious that they've got to eat all day long. That's all literally day. all they do is yeah. eat. And yeah. they refuse to have sex with each other. <laughs> they have absolute... to be forced to do that as well, don't they? I mean, yeah. you know, it's so rare that you get like a baby panda. It makes the world news. <laughs> I know. They're idiots. <laughs> they're idiots do they not understand that they will die out completely if they don't start having it off i mean maybe, stupid. maybe it's the like the the, the longest uh, suicide attempt in history <laughs> yes <laughs> they're, they're trying just... <laughs> to become extinct <laughs> Anyway, animals, a lot of animals are stupid. I'll tell you what ain't stupid. Birds are not stupid. You know when people say, uh, bird brain, you think, Mm -hmm. hang on a minute, birds are so clever. So if anyone calls me a bird brain, I'm going to be quite proud of that because I can't believe how clever they are, what they know. I mean, don't you think? I just, I think they're really, oh, here's some really horrible bad news. Worse than the tiger. You know the pair of blackbirds that I keep telling you about, the one that sings his little heart out at the top of the fir tree? Yeah, tweedy, tweedy, tweed. We found him dead under the bush. Oh, you killed it. I didn't kill it. <laughs> of course I didn't kill it. He's, he's, a, he's like a, they're like our children, those two blackbirds, and one of them's dead. Oh my God, you killed your children? <laughs> Well, seriously, it's I, I was I'm seriously, I could nearly cried. I nearly cried. Well, it had just, it just died of natural cause? I don't know how long a blackbird lives. Not very long, I wouldn't think. Does it even well, last a year? That's what I tried to find out actually. Does it do they just drop dead? Because this blackbird literally looked like it was it had just dropped dead, just hmm. fallen over. It was totally yeah. intact. And <laughs> it's, it's an ex blackbird. <laughs> no, because it hadn't it hadn't been attacked or savaged or anything by right. another animal right. or anything hmm. like that or a cat. It was just it was just on its side, just completely looking like the blackbird. Like it might be asleep or something. Right. Just stunned. <laughs> yeah, what, what, there was nothing for it to bash into because they do do that. They do stun themselves sometimes. Oh yeah, don't they? Well, windows. They, they, yeah, I tell you what, they are, are they are actually stupid. They can't avoid windows. I mean, for crying out loud. Yeah, but you can't see a window. I've bumped into windows and fallen over <laughs> loads of times. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> I honestly have. I did it in one of those really cool beach clubs. Um, <laughs> really, like, just full of really cool people and young people, in you know, with perfect bodies and all. And I just literally <laughs> walked over to go to the loo, and there's a glass door there. I just. <laughs> 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 I fell over and that was it and nobody helped me nobody everyone was was so embarrassed for me I think that they didn't even come over and help me get up <laughs> <laughs> how mean is that <laughs> so cruel mm-hmm. right hang on oh okay so yeah now we've got a lot of people who need assisting well that's the point of this podcast isn't it is it not uh, not. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's supposed to be. <laughs> Definitely not. No. <laughs> uh, 
All right. Right. My problem is I'm closing in on 60. I have no musical taste. I, no, I've read that. You've I've, read, I've read that. that? You've read that last read that. week. I've read that. We last said week. it's a bit Maybe. late. It's a bit late. Okay, here we go. Hang on. Before you go on, Knickers, yeah. have you um, have you seen that series called um, oh, what, something about the 70s music? I think it's on Apple TV. Have you got Apple TV? No, you don't have Apple no. TV. Oh, what's oh, it called? Because I, I do remember something about that. Oh, my God. I can't even tell you how brilliant it is. Hang on a minute. I've got it over here on my iPad. Hold on. La, 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 la. You, you will la, la, la. absolutely love it. La, la, la. I'm only on episode three, but it's just all about, like, the late 60s and the 70s and um, hmm. the drug taking. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, what's it's, it called? I'm just finding it. Hang on. TV, Apple TV. There it is. Hang on. Oh, everything's so bloody slow. Nothing was. Oh, it's called 1971, the year that music changed Change. everything. Right. Yeah, I have seen that. Have it, you heard of it? Heard. Yeah. I've seen it. Yeah, it's great. It's. Oh, you actually watched it? I've seen it all. Yeah, terrific. Oh, my God. How brilliant is it? It's very, very good. Have you seen the Beatles thing? The, no, you, know, you told me about back. that, and then I forgot about it. Right. What's it called? It's called Get Back. It's very, very slow. It's basic. I don't know. There's something odd about the visuals. It, it looks sort of 3D. It, it really feels as though you're sitting in the studio with them, and nothing happens very much for six hours. But it's, to me, it was absolutely riveting. Is it a documentary then? Or Yeah, it's basically when they were recording Get Back, you know, just before they did the thing on the roof. Oh, yeah. They had a camera in the studio, which was constantly rolling for hours and hours and hours. And they didn't know what to do with it because it's, you, you look at it and it's like what, there was nothing happening. Somebody comes in and makes a cup of tea and they go out and, you know, what what can you do with that? Yeah. And then they got the guy who did um, Lord of the Rings, the director, whatever his name is, can't remember. Oh, I don't know. Um, Peter Jackson. And he sort of, I think he colorized it maybe. I'm not sure. There's something odd visually about it. It, it does look as though it's 3D, very weird so, so i don't know what they've done but then he edited it all down and oh it's just great so once you finish 1971 watch get back how did you watch 1971 though where where was it on um on the television because i had to subscribe to bloody apple tv i mean I, it was free because i got it free for five months with something else hmm. um but it's That's probably how i got it yeah i've got i, I mean i've got to watch it like because i don't know when the time runs out but, and when, when the time runs out, they d- d- delete it from your iPad, your downloads, don't they? So you can't watch anything. Really? But I've I've watched three episodes. Oh, my God. I want to watch it all again. It's mm. just so good. It it's is. the best thing on telly ever. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, I this summer I have hardly watched any TV at all. Like, you know, half an hour eating dinner before I go out to work. Mm. And, and that's about it. But um, come the winter... And we all, all get sent back inside, which is coming around really quickly, Carol. Oh, my God, it's almost August. No. Then, uh, yeah, I've got... A I know. Bad... Where's July gone? Where has July gone? Yeah. It's the 23rd of July. Correct. Flipping heck. We're already on the downhill, aren't we? We're already getting darker already. Well, that happened at the end of June. I can't, I can't, literally can't bear it. <laughs> well, you're all right. It'll be warm until November there. Um, yeah, quite. Well, yeah, warm enough to sit outside. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's warm. It's warm enough to sit outside all year if it's sunny. Mm. But if it's not sunny, it can be bitterly cold. Well, it- come back to Britain, Carol. It's it's damp and grey here. You'll love it. I've just been there. <laughs> And it was dull and damp and grey. I, luckily, I missed all that stupid Scorchio weather. Yeah, I I didn't. Even I, for about an hour there, thought, mm. "Oh, this is a bit hot." <laughs> and I took my um, my merino wool underclothes off. Oh they were God. back on yesterday, mind, because it was only about seventy six. Are you joking? No. <laughs> 
You're, you're, you're kidding, right? <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. I've just taken it off because it's a bit warm. What, what, what's it? What is it now? Let me just check. I'm checking for you while you wait. All right, one, I'm one waiting. Moment, please. I'm on tenter hooks. Mm. Do you know what tenter hooks are? No, I don't. I just say it because that's what people say. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Apparently, it's what weavers used to hang their cloth on so that it would dry and then wait in anticipation of it drying. I believe oh. that's what it is. It's 72 degrees. Well, I know, but what's that in new money? Don't you do Fahrenheit? No. What? No, it's all no, it's all C numbers down here, isn't it? 22. Well, that's not cold, is it? No, that's what I'm saying. I've taken off my woolly. What's it here? Let's see. <laughs> Shall all I go right. outside and look at the thermometer? <laughs> no, I can tell you what it is because I've got you on my phone. It's 29. It's going to be 30. Yeah. Oh, look at that, Carol. That's Every well. day for a week, it's going to be brilliant hot sunshine and 31 degrees. Yeah, I know. And I've got to go back to London again on uh, Wednesday. Oh, well, what time's dinner? Well, I ain't going out because I'm going, I'm going, I've got to go. I've got to do Loose Women on Thursday and Friday, and I might yeah. do GB News on Thursday night as well. So it's just literally a whirlwind trip just to do some work. That's it, really. I know you think I don't do any work, but I do. <laughs> I work very hard. <laughs> no, no, you don't. Yeah, okay, it's only for like, and you know, a couple of hours, but it isn't. I still have to get there at eight o'clock in the morning, and um, and that's it. <laughs> eight <laughs> till half past twelve. No, yeah. half past one. Yeah, well, that's then, like that's and hard then just work. Gas away. That's not work. That's chatting. Yeah, but it's you know, it's it's not as easy as it looks. <laughs> 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 yeah it is it's not right how many people have we helped so far oh i don't know quite a few no <laughs> you're a terrible person i'm sorry i am a bad influence dear nick and carol a quick follow-up you read out my message i was uh, stunned mainly because when i submitted my message i had partaken of a couple of three glasses of red wine and forgot that I corresponded. My colonoscopy went ahead. It was an eye-opening experience, but not as alarming as I expected. In my previous message, I said it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. It was a tenuous, a tenuous at best reference to St. Nick and Christmas Carol. Very poor on my part. This, this goes on. I've only got through about a third of it. Maybe I should pass it by. Yeah, we couldn't under, we couldn't under, what he meant by that. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. We thought it was because he was going to get to see up his bum. <laughs> what? You remember this? Yeah, I remember it, yeah. I remember the I – do, I do remember it, yeah. Um, it was the last line on the email. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, and I don't know why. We we didn't really understand what it meant, but it was funny. Right, well, talking okay. Talking about having a colonoscopy. <laughs> well, that's what I always think about. You know, when, when, say, when somebody says Christmas, I think Santa Claus, sleigh bells, colonoscopies. <laughs> anyway there might be a question in here i'm considering selling my house but i find myself blighted by barking dogs who live in front and behind the issue is that i've lived there for almost five years and have tolerated it thus far the barking is worse in the daytime and i've been able to cope thanks to the help of earphones lbc and my songs list is it immoral to make no mention of this issue when giving viewings the dogs mainly bark when other dogs pass by mainly uh, maybe I could install temporary roadblocks to conf to confront the owner. Seems like more trouble than it's worth. Hmm. Huh, says John. Well, I can actually help with that. <clears throat> Go on. You are not legally obliged to say anything about the dogs uh, unless you've started a, a fight over it or right. uh, put a complaint in. Yes. If, if you officially complain, you are legally obliged to tell the buyer. Yeah. So um, if you have never approached your neighbour or done anything official, you could probably have a word. You could have had a word rather than if you put anything in writing, then, 
yeah, you have to you have to tell people. But then you've got to hope when people come round to look at the place that the dogs aren't barking their heads off because they'll put right. everybody off. Yeah. What with dogs down here? I mean, oh my god, it's it's a nightmare. We had our old neighbour had ten dogs, and you oh. leave. Yeah, you just leave them out all the time. Ten. Oh my god. It was like he was running a sanctuary or a dog's home or something. And when he, in the summer, he used to lock them in the garage, the garage, and he used to no. bloody bark all day long, and it was so cruel. Anyway, he had he moved out, so I think some of the neighbours did complain to his la- to the landlord there. And um, it was renting. <laughs> it was renting, yeah. I mean, oh, my imagine, God. Imagine being a landlord and saying, yeah, it's all right, you can bring your 10 dogs. I mean, <laughs> seriously. Can you imagine? So the new was people, in, they've got three France? dogs. Was this in what? France? Pardon? Was this in France? In France, yeah, right, yeah. Right, right, right. So um, the, the new people there, they've got three dogs. So two of the dogs, one's a golden retriever and one's a boxer, they never bark. But then there's this weird-looking thing with a scrunched-up face. <laughs> just barks all, all of the time at nothing. Do you know what I mean? At nothing. Yeah. I don't know. What do they bark at? Nothing. Are I don't, don't know. We don't I, I think, complain, I, but... Yeah, I think that dogs are so stupid that they, they think that if they bark at somebody walking by the house and the person keeps walking, it's their barking that made them keep walking rather than come in and attack them. So they make that conclusion right off the bat and then they forevermore bark at people walking past the front of the house because yeah. they think that it's only them that's preventing them from coming in. Oh. <laughs> I know they are. It it really is a bit of a nightmare down here. Mark Mark gets really, I mean, really sort of worked up about it. I'm yeah. I'm I'm calmer about it, but because I can switch off. You know what I mean? I don't. In sometimes I just don't even hear it. But it's in, kids screaming that does it for me as well. Like never, ever, ever no. live next door to someone with a pool. Because they scream and they scream, or a trampoline. While well, it's impossible, every single person on earth has yep. got a bleeding trampoline in their back garden for their kids. They have. I, what is that all about? With a big like, wire mesh net round it. We never had those. We just used to fall off and break our legs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I wish they would. <laughs> I don't know. It is a new thing, though, isn't it? Like everyone it has a trampoline. Every everyone. single house with kids has a trampoline. Every single one. It's amazing. Yeah. So you can't really avoid that, but you can avoid a pool. Never live next to someone with a pool. Or go on holiday where it says, great for families. Oh, no. <laughs> warning, warning. <laughs> that annoys me more, actually. If I'm on holiday and people just let their kids scream all mm. the time, jumping in and out of the pool. Yeah. Oh, my God. It drives me mad. So we've yeah. just booked another holiday for next year. For next year. Where? Where are you going? Butlins? <laughs> yeah, that's right. And we've booked somewhere that's got, like, its own section of adults only, no kids. Right. And it's like, I'm, I'm, I just, I can't, it really spoils the holiday, doesn't it, if you have to listen to bloody kids screaming. Why do they well, have to scream all the time? I don't have to scream. Well, I, I sort of, um, I came to the conclusion, look, look, I can't remember where we were, probably... In the South Bank, they've got those jets of water that play and kids run around in them and they scream. And I thought... Fountains, I mean. Yeah. Why do they do that? And I think it starts as a baby because it's their only defence mechanism. That's all a baby's got, to make an ear-piercingly loud noise that an attacker would put it down and walk away, or it attracts the attention of its parent. Mm. So that's why babies make that seem seem to have the ability to make a noise beyond which you wouldn't think something that small would be able to create. And yeah. when children, before their voices break, that's pretty much all they've got too, because they're, they're not strong enough to fight somebody off. So they, it's like they're testing their vocal ability. They they, they don't they're not impeded like adults are. Because if I screamed like that, I'd be hoarse in about two minutes. Yeah. Wouldn't, be able to, wouldn't be able to make a sound at all. So they don't have that. And um, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, it's just a, a carrying on from the defence mechanism that they had as babies. But I wish they'd shut the f*** up when they're doing it. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's um on plane. Is it on planes or on in in swimming pools or where it's more annoying? You like if you're sitting behind or in front or next to someone with a baby that's making that noise. You know, I don't. I don't want to do anything to to the baby, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you do have to sit there and go, "Why are you making that noise? What what could possibly be wrong that mm. you have to?" I mean, it's, it is ear, it's piercing, isn't it? It's just oh, so, yeah. a bit like well, my voice right now when I'm getting worked up about it. Yeah. But babies, I mean, there's nothing thinking. you can really do about a baby. You can't tell a baby to, to or you can't tell a baby's parents to maybe get it to tone it down a bit because it's beyond their control quite often. Yeah. yeah. But children, like if they're, I don't know what age, children start screaming, sort of like three, four, five to yeah. ten. I mean, a parent can tell them to shut up. I mean, for God's sake, take control of your children. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, I, I've never actually done it like I know people who would say to other parents, "Can you control your children?" Oh my god, that, that really is asking for it, isn't it? That's yeah, like so, yeah, parents just don't think that. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. In the supermarket, I've seen people like rat, um, have a go at other parents because their kids are running around the supermarket like little maniacs, mm. <clears throat> and um, seriously, the parents just lose it. They lose it. I know. Yeah, yeah. Frightening, isn't it? Well, they're, they're, they're probably up to their uh, up to their eyeballs, and I can't take this anymore from my kid. And then somebody points out to them that they're a bad parent, <laughs> just, just tips them over the edge. I think it's more a case of yes, but my child needs to run free because she's right. her own person or something. Yeah. Like that. This is what's happened these days. This is why this it's is a, why the yeah, world is yeah. such a state. It's a mix of either parents just don't care. Yeah, whatever. And the other ones who care yeah. about the like, Joe Caster's, uh, you know, freedom of expression. Yeah, that's it. Freedom of expression. She needs to express herself. And she does that by bringing down the baked bean tin mountain in the Sainsbury's. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then pooping in the frozen goods aisle. Oh, stop it. I'm just saying there's poop in the frozen goods aisle. Clean up needed in aisle nine. <laughs> 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 I've never seen that before. <laughs> Does that happen? No. Well, yeah, but it wasn't a kid. That was me. You know, that was me giving vent to my freedom of expression. What, when you were a kid or recently? <laughs> yeah, last week. <laughs> I thought, right. <laughs> Take that. <laughs> oh, God, I haven't been in the supermarket for so long. And especially in, well, I don't think you can count budgets as a supermarket. It's like a little local, isn't it? Well, where'd you get your food? Well, here, at the mar- mostly at the market. Or- the off license. You pick up a packet of nuts. <laughs> 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 yeah, we go to the supermarket and we buy like more booze and then I've told you this before when we have been to the supermarket and we've like clank 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 the clanking noise in the trolley and bottles all over <laughs> the, the conveyor belt um and then we we you sort of look at it you go oh better buy something to eat <laughs> 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 so yeah you just sort of like pick up whatever's like by the till like, oh yeah. yeah yeah no we do eat food as well <laughs> packet of chewing gum that'll do it but that's how you can spot the brits in the supermarkets down here because they've always got so much wine the french people buy one bottle of wine and that's it but the english people british people just I mean, they've got trolleyfuls of it, <laughs> trolleyfuls of booze and barbecue stuff. That's yes, it. yes. <laughs> I don't know, honestly, this time of year, it's so busy everywhere. The airport is busy even, and it never is, Nice. But because it's just everybody seems to be on holiday here at the moment. Everybody mm-hmm. is absolutely yeah. packed. Nice is going to be a nightmare later, but I'd, I'd want to go because I want to look at the sea. I'll send you a picture, Nicholas. No, don't. Yeah. Yes. No, yes. no, no, yes. no. Yes, no. yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, hi, Twit and Cackle. I've been looking for a new room stroke flat in London for the past month while sofa surfing. It seems impossible to get a viewing, let alone sign a contract. 
Perhaps you have some suggestions on gaining the landlord's attention, failing that some other way, some other ways to find shelter in the city. Thank you kindly, says Mark. Oh well, I don't know. I think I think um, didn't the government do something to ruin the rental market? Didn't they like give m- so much protection to tenants that landlords aren't renting out anymore, or something like that? That's why it's difficult. No, I think that was something like making it less uh, financially attractive for people to own dozens of properties, um, which is not a Tory thing to do. I thought they'd have been all for that, you know, being as how mm. almost all of them own dozens of properties. <laughs> yeah, but what do but, they ever do that's Tory anymore? They don't. Right, they don't but, do not what, but we're not talking about that. Anyway, yes, I, I understand. <laughs> no, because I tell you what it's about. It's about it's about money, isn't it? It's, it's just they're broke. We're broke as a country. We're broke. They need as much money as they can get, so they're penalising landlords. Yeah, but we're not talking about that. I didn't talk about it. I just said it. Hey, you know, we have a, haven't had a sausage and dingleberries a topic, although I think if we don't do one, then the one that we didn't use from last week carries forward. Do you oh, what, that was? Was it, what was it last week? No, it's one that you came up with, which I thought was quite good. Hobbies. Oh, hobbies. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, it's not a sausages moment because it was just uh, almost. Well, almost. no, because I was trying to help the poor guy who can't get viewing for oh, a room. Right. I yeah. was I was um, musing as to why that might be. You just got to go on a lot of estate agents' websites and <clears throat> just spend your day on the online looking. I mean, it must be. I mean, that's what I did. If anyone wants to rent a room, you don't get those from estate agents, do you, really? You have to uh, go, you have to read loot or whatever it is. <laughs> do they still have loot? I don't know. Is loot still a thing? It used to be that um, people would put adverts in news agents' windows, yeah. room available, yeah. three and six. <laughs> three Much and like six. cats. <laughs> <laughs> three and six. Yeah, they did. Do, they did used to do that. I don't know why. I mean, that would be a good place to look, wouldn't it? Still, because no, or, or on post office notice boards. I no. Don't know. <laughs> I don't know how you. What the post office that. notice board, Grandma? Well, <laughs> wouldn't you go on Facebook or something like that as well? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, there must be some some sort of internet thing. So. I, I I don't know. I is it is hard. But I do it remember. used to be in the back of Time Out, didn't it? I mean, Time Out time used to be run here. That's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And back in the 80s, it was so easy to just get places to live. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't it? And everyone lived in Clapham North. Well, I did look at a place in Clapham North, but I didn't live there. I lived in no. Tootin for quite a while. Right. Which is down the road. I um, used to live in Clapham North in 1980 mid like yeah. four something like that for quite a while and um it, it hasn't changed at all it's still a it's still a grot bag just like it ever was <laughs> yeah i know is that where the two brewers is clapham north that no that's up? up towards uh the common i think that's on the high street isn't it oh is it i don't know i thought that was clapham north no, Clapham North is uh, is the end where Stockwell and Brixton abut. Oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah the Stockwell really end. Yeah. Grimy. Yeah. That's where my I nearly bought a house there. Oh, big mistake. Huge. What in Stockwell? Are you joking? Now? Oh, Stockwell, right. Yeah. Mm. It was um, well, that, isn't that that one square where MPs live? What it, eh? Stockwell? Yeah, I'm sure that the Stockwell's got one like Victorian or Edwardian square of niceness surrounded by an absolute hideous mess uh, um, where MPs live because it's very, very near the centre of town. It is, yeah, I know. Um, no, I don't know. I don't know that. It, well, anyway, it was so long ago. It was like 1982 or 83 yeah. or something when I nearly right. bought it. And I was offered it by my property developer boss. And guess what the price was for a house? 35000 25. Really? And I said, no, thanks. I don't want to have a mortgage. <laughs> 25 <laughs> grand. 25 grand. You couldn't even buy a front door for that these days. 25 grand. Yeah. Now, those houses are probably, I don't know, in the millions now, I reckon. Well, I, mean, I haven't seen it, but I would be surprised if it wasn't. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, yeah, because it was I press <clears> off, <throat> I was a bit gentrified, I think, isn't it? Didn't it, it get a bit no. posh? I know bricks. No, oh. <laughs> no. Well, that's what they tell you. Well, oh yeah, well, estate agents, of course they do. Well, people in newspapers as well, they own places in different oh. parts of like the Sunday Times home section is hilarious for that. It's just. Why are you talking this area up? Oh, let me guess. You've got a house there. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, all of the, all of the magazines are, are kind of like that, with the exception of Best magazine. Oh, Best magazine, yeah. Best doesn't talk anything up. Not they, um, the, the editor will have had a, a box full of, um, of makeup and moisturiser, and that suddenly um, magically appears in a whole page full of pictures of said products with, uh, you know, the legend, this is just the most fabulous concealer ever. Yeah, everything, everything in a glossy magazine, not best because it's not glossy, it's, it's cheap paper. It's um, everything in a glossy magazine, like, say, Vogue, for instance, is more or less an advert. Right, but but not Vogue. Like Vogue, but not actually Vogue. Well, that's what I said, like Vogue. Like, I, I'm trying to explain what I mean by glossy magazines. Right. Well, how much do they cost these days? Oh, oh, I used to love getting magazines. I used to have like magazine orgies on a Saturday yeah, afternoon. Yeah, I, I know, I know. You've told us this before. <laughs> have I? Oh my yeah. god, I miss that. I do miss that actually. Yeah. But now they're just full of adverts, so I just don't buy them anymore. And I'm not really oh, interested no. in fashion either anymore, to be honest. Well, no. I mean, you know, look, I mean. <laughs> I was scrabbling around to come up with something cutting and nasty, but I just can't be bothered. <laughs> well, you, are you, are you, no, you're not, no. <laughs> a dedicated follower of fashion. You bet I am. You, what? You walk around in track pants all day long and, and merino underwear. <laughs> it's a fashion. It's not a fashion. <laughs> but I, I did used to be obsessed with fashion magazines and looking at clothes, and now I just think how pointless it all is. It's, yeah, it's pointless, isn't it? Really. When did you? When did? Because I can remember when I uh, uh, started my obsession with clothes that yeah. um, cost me massive amounts into my forties. I can remember the moment that it happened. And it was watching American Gigolo. Do you remember that movie? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, Richard Gere, yeah. yeah. Do you remember the bit when he's uh, deciding what to wear and he, he yeah. throws his stuff on the bed and it's all Giorgio Armani, which I'd yeah. never heard of before. The, the, he hadn't really come here yet, apart from one place. And so, and, and in that moment, and he's just, you know, the, the music's on and he's deciding which tie to go with which jacket and it all looks fantastic. Yeah. And at that moment, I thought, oh, I must have those clothes. And so... And I can't remember how I looked it up because how would you look up something like where is Giorgio Armani sold in this country? How would you look that up before the internet? Um, well, I suppose hmm. you'd just go down South Morton Street, wouldn't you? Or yeah, something but I'd like never that. heard of South Morton Street. I'd, I had no idea about any of this stuff. Oh, well, I mean, my, my I, previous I, clothes, just, uh, as much as designer as I ever bought previously, were Levi's. <laughs> so I don't know how I f figured it out, but there was a shop on South Mott Street called Browns, and they had the first yeah. outlet of Giorgio Armani in, in the country. And so I confidently went in there thinking, oh, I'm going to look fantastic by the time I come out. And I checked the prices <laughs> and stiffened visibly <laughs> and thought, well, if I don't touch anything at all, can I get out of the shop with the amount of money that I came in with? But no, I wasn't going to be beaten. So I bought the, the cheapest thing that they had Mm, which, which was, was which was a cap sleeved bright blue logo t shirt for a ridiculous amount of money, which I'm sure looked great on a six foot model lounging on the beach in Miami. Mm. But it looked pretty poor on on some skinny white bloke in uh, the, in the middle of London. So it's one of those things that I wore once in the shop and then never again. See, that is that is slavish, isn't it? That's slavish. You were determined to own something from Browns, probably so you could just get the bag and walk around with it. Well, I'd never heard of Browns, and it was the first time I'd ever been there or ever been down South Morton Street, but it was the Giorgio Armani part from that movie, and that movie cost me a lot of money. Mm. 
Yeah, I do. I do remember it actually. I, I, I kind of knew about Browns. I think quite early on. Oh yeah. Because I yeah, because I had a flatmate um, who used to only buy clothes in Browns, mm. and he was a student, and he used to save up all his money. I think he worked in a bar or pub or something. And yeah, well, so did I. I did the exact. In he worked in uh, heaven. Oh right. And well, just, I, I did the exact same thing. I worked in a pub in Landor Road in Clapham North and saved up all my money and, and went to the sale. See, I, I hardly ever bought clothes full price. Never, ever, ever. Mm. That, that's a nice point, game. isn't it? It's, it's a mugs Ridiculous. game. Yeah. yeah, I mean, how how because apart from anything else, th- their seasons are all wrong. They got mm. the summer clothes in in January. And then they got the winter clothes in in July. Yeah. That's insane. What? Why do they do that? Um, I don't know. I think because fashion people always have to be the first with everything. It's, yeah. It's like when you look at, um, I don't know, that's when I read the Sunday Times style section or the fashion section, and they and and it's they always picture these what they call influencers, right? You know oh, what God. an influencer is. <laughs> what, what yeah. the f- I mean, just so ridiculous. Yeah. And there are shows like the fashion shows, which are very early in the year when it's freezing cold. Mm-hmm. And they're showing like the next winter's collection or something. It's not the summer collection because the summer collection has been out like the year before. <laughs> and, and they're all, wearing are they just like bare legs sandals no coat and you're looking at you think what's the weather in paris at the moment <laughs> it's like minus 45 <laughs> and it, but but it's just too important for them to look like you know to i don't know it's, it's just weird isn't it i, mean, do I don't paid? know i don't know how the business survives i mean you, you go around like every now and again when i'm in the middle of town i'll, I'll just for amusement's sake i walk around a place called Dover Street Market. Have you ever been in there? Yeah, yeah. That's where Posh Posh's shop is, isn't it? Victoria Beckham shops there. Oh, uh, no, that's in Dover Street. Oh, it's Dover in Dover Street. Street. Dover Street Market. It's not in Dover Street anymore, but they call, still call it Dover Street Market. It's on where Haymarket. Is it? Haymarket. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. it's, this, it's this massive store. I mean, really big. And it's almost invisible from the outside. They've got no window display. They've just got these huge white balls in the window about sort of... 15 feet in diameter and no clothes at all. So you really have to know it, know about mm. it mm. To, to find it. And you go in there and the stuff is absolutely ridiculous, like clown clothes <laughs> at oligarchs prices. And I just think, who is buying this stuff? How can you confidently put a T-shirt on a rack and ask somebody to pay 600 quid for it and and base a business model around that. Who's buying this stuff? Well, obviously, people with more money than sense. And the thing is, with people who go in those places, they're not looking at the price tag. They're just picking stuff up and going, oh, I like that. Like, you know, like Elton John would just go, oh, like that, like that. <laughs> and just put it, just like get someone else to pay for it, and then it will end up in your wardrobe. I think that's what people with money do when they go shopping. They don't look yeah. at the prices. No. It's like did, you ever see that, did you ever see that Michael Jackson um, documentary? Was it Martin Bashir? Something like that. And, and they go to uh, an antique shop in Las Vegas. Did you ever see that? I have seen it, yeah. Yeah, well, he goes to Neverland with him as well, doesn't he? Yeah, but in this antique store. And, yeah. and they've got this, oh, it's absolutely it's this huge emporium of hideous old stuff. Mm. And they'll have, like, jars that are four foot high. And Michael Jackson go, go through going, oh, that's lovely. I'll have that one. And, oh, that's lovely, too. I'll have that one. I'll have three of those. And he just goes through. But he basically buys the entire store. <laughs> and Martin, I think it's Martin Bashir. He goes after him looking at the price tags. And it's like a quarter of a million pounds for a jar. And he's just bought six of them. Oh, my God. I don't, remember, he, he, it. I don't remember that bit, actually. I have seen it. I'm sure I've seen it. Yeah. Apparently, he returned all of it the next day. <laughs> Oh, so what, he was just showing off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just making it look like he was going to an antique shop and buy all the stock. Yes. Ugh. Wow. I'm sure a lot of people do that as well. They they go, they go breeze through a clothes store, they buy all this stuff, they, they wear it, get themselves photographed in it or, or photograph themselves in it, of course, put it up on uh, YouTube or Instagram or whatever, and um, then they take it all back the next day. Uh, I think they almost definitely do that. Either that or they get paid 
Because some of these people, some of these women that, that you see, like really sort of, you know, not quite middle-aged, but I don't know, in their 40s, mm. I suppose, really skinny, perfectly groomed. Everything yeah. about them is just like, you know, you would uh, fashionably perfect. Mm. And you'd think, well, they've got like millions, I mean, millions of followers, like 5 million people following them and, and wow. hanging on their every word. So I would imagine that they probably do get given stuff or even they get stuff loaned to them all the time because if yeah. they wear it, then other people are going to go, oh, I want that one. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I don't, what a life, though. What a life. Can you imagine getting out of bed in the morning and thinking, right, the most important thing is what you're going to wear? I just can't imagine thinking that. <laughs> it's the, that is the most important thing. And then you've got to spend hours and hours literally getting your hair done, putting your makeup on, making sure you look perfect. And that's probably every day. I, d- I bet none of them slouch around in their jammies at home with a dressing gown on with porridge down it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you're complaining about their lifestyle. Y- you do everything that they do apart from the <laughs> making yourself look nice part. <laughs> that's not fair, Nick. <laughs> you can say that again. I had a shower right. this morning. Excuse me. <laughs> I've got to go and get dressed. I'm not really dressed, but oh, I won't go into that. No, uh, on on that awful note, that's it. <laughs> oh God, did we help anybody? <laughs> well, there was the guy with the flat, and yeah, uh, we discussed it. I'm not sure whether we helped. Well, you came up with an idea, look in estate agents' windows, but I don't think you can rent rooms in estate agents' windows. So actually, no, we didn't help anybody. <laughs> you need to be on an estate agent's books. You need to call them on the phone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, they don't do anything. They're just like <clears throat> shop windows, aren't they, estate agents? Anyway, listen, I've got to go. I need to go out for lunch. Right. <laughs> so what do you do? I go out for lunch most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> No, All I don't. Right, that, I don't be. actually. I've just been in London doing Loose Women and GB mm-hmm. News, and yeah. I'm going back to London again next week and the week after. So oh, I'm working what time's, hard. What time's dinner? Well, I'm only going back for like one <laughs> night and doing two shows, and that's yeah. that. Mm-hmm. So I can't fit you in at the moment. Maybe right. in October when I'm back for a, a bit longer. October? Um, I'll starve to death by the time that comes around. <laughs> well, I don't think you will. You're not relying on me, are you, for sustenance? You've you've got other food to eat. <laughs> Anyway, I do uh, Loose Women on ITV. It's a daytime show with four women literally gag, gassing, gassing for an hour. Um, and uh, I do a column in Best Magazine, and um, that's out on Tuesdays. And it's available in all good supermarkets and news agents. And this week, it's about nothing because I got pulled from the mag. What? Well, I wrote my column, but they didn't put it in there because... I don't know. They had. They needed to put somebody else in my place and someone else on the cover. Who? Kate Garraway. Who's that? She's on GMB. Good Morning Britain. She's like a Good Morning Television presenter. Oh right. Yeah. Well, she's got. A, she's got a sick husband. That's probably why. Oh I'm right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got bumped. I got bumped. Yeah. So I'm not that bothered. I, I'm, hopefully, I'll still get paid. <laughs> um, but it was a it was a good cover and it was a good column and it was all about um, plastic surgery and, and, and manipulating your face. You know, have you seen those apps where you can literally manipulate your face to look like whoever you want? Have you seen no, them? Oh my I haven't. god, it's just terrible. Anyway, so that's my column next week, week after next. That's what I do, Nick. Because what do you do? I do two other podcasts. One's called the Nick Abbott Habit, which is, uh, as it sounds, no, which is um, uh, the, it's called the Nick Abbott Habit. And uh, it's clips from old shows, all squeezed together. Maximum amusement. It's a half an hour long. If you wish to be amused and you've only got half an hour, it's right up your alley. Uh, Ask for it by name on an internet near you, the Nick Abbott Habit. Plus, I do um, a podcast of my Friday and Saturday night shows on the radio 
uh, which is called uh, Nick Abbott, The Whole Show. We take the news and the ads out, which means it takes less time to listen to. You'll use less electricity. And by this time next year, you'll have saved up enough to pay the tip on Carol's beachside lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be back on the radio Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10 on LB seeing you. Excellent. Right. Is that it? Okay. I believe that is it. You may go. Can I go now? You can okay. go right now. Thank you.